This is Mike Kulas. And this is Luke Schneider. <laughs> we are on the Overload team uh, coming at you from Champaign, Illinois. Uh, I'm the lead designer, but I also do a lot of uh, gameplay programming and level design, and I'll do a little bit of music. Mike does a lot of. I do a lot of programming. Lately, I just do what Luke tells me to do. We're uh, <laughs> tons of robots to the game, and where it touches AI, that's mostly me doing that kind of stuff. And then Luke says, no, that's not what I meant. And then I do it again. And then he fixes it. And then, and then we change the numbers. Next, yeah, then he changes numbers, yeah. Uh, I'm not telling anybody, because if the level designers find out, they'll make super complicated <laughs> levels. So uh, I would like to see there be a guide bot in the game. It will help me finish the game, um, which is why there was a guide bot in Descent 2 in the first place. Um, if there's time, maybe. If there's time. If we're ahead of schedule, there will be a guide bot. But we also might try pretty hard to make time for it. I would, I would say that would be something very cool to do. To me, that's not the guide bot anymore. Um, but uh, that would be, was that a stretch goal? No. It was never announced anymore. Okay. Yeah. We talked about doing that. Um, it would be fun. If we have lots of spare time, we could do a really good job on that. Um, maybe that's something for a sequel. Yeah, we have to see how much the players get lost because uh, I think our game is a little bit better in terms of orient orienting the player towards where they need to go, but uh, what, what the guide bot does aside from lead you to where you need to go, uh, we don't know yet. You've been making levels for over 20 years now, you and Dan, so you should be able to make great levels that are not terribly confused, they're only appropriately confusing. <laughs> right. Only intentionally confusing right. when they need to be. Uh, in multiplayer, you will probably have level one upgrades by default and you'll have to pick up level two upgrades when you want them. Um, but in terms of whether you get the 2A or 2B upgrades, um, the 2A and 2B upgrades, so there's four levels for weapon upgrades and you start at level 0 and then go to level 1 and then there's two alternate versions for the, the, multi, the ultimate power weapon. So um, how we choose those for multiplayer is still to be determined. But multiplayer is off for a while so we're not too worried about it. We'll figure it out. Yeah, there actually are. They're all functional right now. There's player upgrades for armor and ammo and uh, energy and your movement speed and all sorts of fun stuff like that. So there are player upgrades and they actually do function now. There's just no mechanism for upgrading them through the UI. So we'll get to that part eventually. We can say it's secret? in the solar system. Yeah, it starts in the solar system. Yes. There we go. I don't think so. The comet, I'd say, is fairly unlikely. Asteroid, Asteroid is possible. possible. I'm sure a lot of them were in Descent 3. Yeah, a lot of <laughs> uh, uh, stuff that didn't make D1 made D2 and and on to D3. Um, I, don't, I don't really want to add a whole lot of complexity to the game. Um, so there are features that add complexity, which are sometimes worth it, and then there are features that just sort of fill in uh, gaps uh, uh, and are, you know, make the whole better. Um, so I don't feel like we're on a search for cool new things to add. No, I think, I think we we're, we're going pretty, more for quality. Yeah. Like everything that we put in the game has to be high quality, so we're not trying to overload the player with features. Ooh. You don't even know you said that. Um, I, I would like to do some different things, qualitatively different things in AI, like having sometimes the robots cooperate, having the robots be more aware of what kind of a room they're in. Or am I in a tunnel? Oops, am I in a tunnel? Am I in a large room? Um, things that would be just obvious to a player to play that way and the robots actually never really uh, make much of a distinction in how they behave based on the shape of the room or the tunnel um, and they never cooperate with each other um, so that would be interesting stuff to do I hope we can do some of that
Yeah. They're mines in the sense that they will all be interiors and almost wholly underground, although we we're talking about showing you. Um, you. You'll be able to see outside of it, but you won't be able to go outside of it. So you won't have these, you know, like, you know, like low level, low altitude flight um, sections of the game, but you'll be able to see outside and give you a sense of place. Um, but uh, as to whether they're all mines, I would say they're all mine related. They're all underground and... Um, some are going to be industrial, some are caves. Um, they, they're not all functionally mines. Uh, I play on Rookie when I just want to get through the game and see a certain feature or a certain robot. Um, when I actually want to challenge, I play on Hot Shot. Uh, you just have to focus a little bit more and save the game on occasion, watch out for drillers and uh, homing robots and stuff like that when you play on Hot Shot. So that's why I don't always play on Hot Shot, because sometimes I just want to see a feature or just see how something feels without having to worry about dying all the time. I play on Rookie. I... Uh, probably have not played on Hot Shots since 1995 when I had to quit and start all over at about level 10. Um, it was just too hard. So, in fact, I played the game yesterday um, and I played only with keyboard. Um, and I played on Rookie and then I eventually used the cheats. Uh, <laughs> but I had to get to a certain level to see a certain robot because we we're working on a similar robot to that. And uh, it was a lot of fun, but I got motion sick. I don't get motion sick from overload, but I do get motion sick. I think you build up a tolerance after a while, Yeah. and I just haven't played Descent, so there's something different about the movement there, uh, field of view, whatever, that caused me to feel motion sick after about, I don't know, half an hour. Uh, I like to switch between keyboard and joystick and a gamepad, just because it's good to make sure that both I consider those the major controls, but there's also mouse and keyboard, and I'm not as good with mouse and keyboard, so we'll be sure that someone with mouse and keyboard plays the game a lot too. But I, I like to make sure that both of those controls feel really good, the, the mouse and joystick, or the keyboard and joystick and the gamepad, but I enjoy both of them, honestly, because sometimes it's easier just to pick up a gamepad and do a, real quick, do a quick little playthrough, and uh, yeah, it's a little simpler. On Descent, I just always played it with the keyboard um, because for the most part I was jumping in the game for just 20 seconds to test something and I didn't even want to take my hands off the keyboard. Um, and then I never got competent at playing it with the joystick, so I probably, I'm sure when I finished it after we shipped it, I played the whole thing at keyboard. Um, Overload, I always play it with the Xbox controller, you know, no matter how quickly I'm going in and out, I, I use the control. I think it's a great way to control it. It's, it's very straightforward, simple. Um, I prefer that to the keyboard. Uh, early in Overload, we actually had more focus on doing that sort of damage to the robots, and we still have the capability of doing that because we do actually break off pieces of the robot based on where you hit them. But the, the sort of action-oriented part of Overload, like we're not focused so much on big strategy. I think if we do that sort of, uh, you know, breaking apart a robot, it'll be more focused on bosses or big robots where there could be a real obvious functionality. Um, for basic robots, I don't think we're gonna do that just because it's too hard to precisely, you know, shoot a robot in a very specific spot and like make sure that you uh, get the sort of cause and effect that you want. Uh, we're more focused on just overall combat and action, not specific parts in general. Well, the uh, second part of that presumes there's a guide bot. If there is, that, that's a very simple thing to add. Go well, ahead. we're not going to have a guided missile, so that's uh, out. But I doubt we're going to have a missile cam just because rendering the whole world again with uh, our... the detail quality that we have is just too expensive. Yeah. It's like having a mirror in the world. We just don't have mirrors like that. Yeah, but in 10 years when computers are 100 times powerful again. All right, well, if people we'll, are still playing in 10 right. years and we're still We'll release that. It, yeah. we'll, it's we'll pretty simple game. stuff. It's more a matter of interface and not confusing the player. Yeah. But. So that also covers sort of rear view as well. Like we're not planning on having a rear view right now. I think it might look very familiar. 
Um, when we first started working on that, um, there was sort of a kind of a grand plan for, you know, we'll, we'll show the ship flying around, you'll see the place that you were at, you know, the moon or whatever. Um, and then we thought, well, wait a minute, people don't really, do they really want to see 30 of these? Um, so it turned into, what, five seconds of that bump ba dump ba dump music and then flying out and seeing, overlaying the text, I think? Or, yeah, okay, yeah. Score. I think that's pretty good, actually. I played Descent yesterday and it shakes you way too much, even at Rookie, in yeah. my opinion. Um, but I kind of like that. I, I, a less of that would be good, and I, I think it's, um, you know, we'll ease you into the whole sequence a little bit more with the uh, overload. Like maybe even the first level, you don't actually have to escape in a certain time or whatever. You just have to reach the exit. Yeah, so. Descent had a very steep learning curve. Uh, the difference between level one and level two was significant. Having to find an exit. I assume we told you in the text, right? I can't believe how much text there was before you actually played that game. There was a lot of text. Yeah, yeah. there will be a lot less, a <laughs> lot, lot less text. Uh, it'll be easy to add an import feature, it's just not there right now. Uh, the format for the levels is very similar, and there's already kind of an import that takes the levels for classic games and puts them into the game, but it just doesn't take them into the editor right now. I'm sure it's easy to convert that. Yeah, so if somebody created a Descent 1 or 2 level, yeah. minus maybe some of the features like weird switches and stuff, there, there, there will certainly be some features we're not planning to support. But like we're not going to convert everything for you. But yeah, but that would, that would be a good head start. Um, yeah, like the texturing is easy to convert, even the decals, like you can get the alignment a certain way. So, yeah, well, that stuff will work. You will definitely be able to turn off the cockpit, and there might be some options in terms of what shows on the HUD, but there will not be multiple cockpits. Unless that's like a. We're not planning on having multiple ships, so having multiple cockpits doesn't make a whole lot of sense. There might be options for what shows in the cockpit, but. I don't know. When are we going to show the cockpit? It'll be a little while. After it's well. done? Yeah. Okay. It'll be a little while. That was me. <laughs> I think. I don't specifically recall it, but um, presuming that that was the first use of that weapon, I probably just created the weapon, stuck it in, and no one ever changed it. So. It was a boss. So it was it was supposed to be hard. Yeah. I, I, is this is this like thank you or is this what a foolish move? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was me. The only thing I remember about the deep stream boss is like beating them was not terribly hard aside from the last one because it was impossible. So yeah, that's what I remember about the deep bosses. They had cool sounds. I, I think the first one was kind of lame because it was just like a giant version of another uh, boss or. Another robot that you fought, but all the other ones were pretty cool. The the last boss, you would never really—he was cloaked all the time, right? You would no, he would uncloak to fire. Right, but you wouldn't be paying much attention to him, so you pretty much never saw that boss at all, right? I don't know. I don't even remember. He's firing cloaked. earth shakers at you. You, as soon as you think he's going to fire, you're going to leave. So. Well, you can pick up the invulnerability. That's cloak. true. No uh, tons of secrets. In I thought we put a lot of work into a boss that would player pretty much never sees. I think enough people saw it. Yeah, that's true. I forgot about invulnerability and cheats and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Obviously, I never killed that boss. But actually, that was only a hot shot that it was impossible. That's why I didn't find that bug. Skew way towards it's a video game. Yeah. So Anyways, in, we're maintaining that in general. Yeah, in Overload, the hostages will just have DNA extracted and then they'll be left behind. And <laughs> no, we actually have a, a better... They're teleporting now. We're tele... yeah. We, we, there, some allowances should be made or you, you break the sense of immersion, I guess, but uh, um, not at the expense of gameplay. One of those. No, both of those, I think. Are we doing another demo? We're not well, sure we're doing a demo. Yeah. We committed <laughs> to it. What do you 
Oh, oh those demos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the demos for backers. Yeah, the, they will. I thought they meant like a public demo. I don't know if there's going to be a public demo. We don't know if there's going to be a public demo, but we will fulfill all of our commitments during the Kickstarter campaign. Yes. Uh, uh, the ones we can remember anyway. Um, no, I think uh, they will support Mac and Linux. and. Uh, I don't know if they'll support them as well. There might be some graphical glitches in those, but... Uh, I think the plan is to support them. Yep. I think Max looked into that a little bit, right? Yeah. Doesn't can't we just clip, you know, set the demo record to true and Unity does the rest? <laughs> no, not that way. I don't know. I, don't I think we should definitely have demos. Um, it depends on how much work it is. We'll, we'll look into it at some point. So, I mean, it, it's good for community building. Um, yeah. That's how you got to see. But there's so much, there's so many good tools now for video recording that's true. that demo recording is just not as important. That's as a good point. Although there's also the kind of recording where it records everything, and then you can go to different points of the view in the world and yeah. see what's going on, which is of course harder. Um, but that, yeah, that's a good point that a lot of people do this stuff without using in-game tools. Yeah. We'll support uh, like streaming stuff as well as we can and make sure that the game is friendly for video recording and stuff like that. Anything's possible. <laughs> I don't know co op I like co op a lot. It's a lot of work to do it well. And then you have to make allowances for that in the in the level design. Um, like every descent one and two and I presume three level had what? At least four starting points, right? The, yeah. The, the the place where the single player the player entered looked kind of weird because we had to provide for multiplayer, uh, not multiplayer for co-op for what four person co-op? Yeah. Yeah. Two. Okay. So there are four of them. Yeah. So um, I think it's a great feature. It's a fair amount of work, um, and I honestly don't know how many people play it. So you know what the uh, split screen is, is definitely not going to happen. How about two screens? Maybe. I don't know. All of the options are a lot of work either way. Yeah. So if we have the time bound in multiplayer, which I plan on having just not a whole lot of, it'll probably work like a Red Faction 2 where just everybody slows down. Because that's actually how the time bound works. You don't, you, when you use it, everything slows down, including yourself, it's just a lot easier to hit the robots and anticipate what they're going to do because everything's moving a lot slower. So there won't be like an advantage for the player who shot the time bomb site from they'll know when it's going to go off and they have control over that. So that they can do it when it helps them the most. All, all right. right. Thank you. Thanks for all the questions. Looking forward to the next one.